You have to understand that when you're looking at these types of um, deposits, the reason that the, the large numbers are there is because we're dealing with uh, the rocks where the oil is generated, the oil has not moved from where it's generated, so you're looking at numbers with uh, billions at, at the end. Over the entire wheeled area, about 1,200 square miles, there's 124 billion barrels in the ground. Um, of that, we have eight, eight licenses which fall in that 1,200 square uh, mile area. And the oil in, in the ground that uh, uh, relates to our licenses amounts to about 16 billion barrels. I think, as I said, our focus is on uh, limestones, not shales. So, um, the, and the reason we're focusing on the limestone is one, because there are actually um, a slightly better reservoir. Um, they're tight, but they have um, slightly better um, uh, oil deliverability possibilities, shall we say. There's a lot of uh, techniques out there that you can use to stimulate limestones without massive hydraulic fracking. Um, so basically what we intend to do to get this oil out to recover it is to utilize um, uh, conventional stimulation methods which are used in limestone fields. So the, the potential to actually increase the flow rate using uh, a horizontal and stimulation is, is very considerable. Th this well really is, um, it's, it's quite a turning point. It's, uh, it's really a game changer for, for the company. It's a game changer for the Weald Basin and potentially for the, you know, the UK onshore oil and gas industry and, and for the country. The rate of you know, 450, we, we got up to 470, um, sustained flow over three days, is about you know, one of the best wells in the whole of the UK onshore in the last 15, wheel, uh, 15 years. Um, I think you know, $30 a barrel, um, no one in the world makes any money apart from Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iran, Iraq, etc. Um, even the Russians, are clearly the, the US equivalent, uh, you know, tight oil producers uh, are now struggling. Their production will come down. Um, uh, th this project was sort of designed to break even at about $40 a barrel. So I think, you know, we, uh, we opened the well up uh, and actually it, uh, what we call, came on uh, very quickly. Um, as soon as we opened the, uh, the downhole valves, uh, we had a big pressure increase and the oil uh, basically um, flowed to the surface very, very quickly. Five to seven hundred barrels a day where, you know, we'd be making um, sort of gross revenues after transport, marketing, etc. of, you know, a million quid a month. So that's, um, that's very good and that's not even including the Portland, which we reported some weeks back, I mean, as I said, a million quid a week, you know, pays for a well in three months. A mi sorry, a million quid a month pays for a new well in three months, you know, so it's very nice. Five, seven hundred barrels a day from one Kimmeridge uh, horizon. I should stress it's only one because we still have the Kimmeridge limestone four to test. He's, you know, I, it doesn't take a, a, an econo economist, uh, econ economist, or a, or, a, or a rocket science to work out that it's going to make us money. Uh, come in for a bit of flack over the years in terms of how much you've played this up, but it seems as though you, you, you could have been right here. Well, it's not, a, it's not a matter of about playing it up. I mean, when we came out, when we were with UCOG, uh, when I was the chairman of UCOG and we drilled the Horse Hill well, I mean, we had some of the world's best analysts calculate that the, um, that the wheel basin had significant potential for hydrocarbons. And when the Horse Hill well flowed, it, you know, at a record um, flow rate for uh, for an onshore well in the UK, it shut quite a few people up that maybe you know this wasn't the Dorking dribbler and it was in fact a Gatwick gusher. But you know the, the results today from Brockham and I know there's been a fair amount of um, retail criticism about how long it takes to get these results out and published. But you know it's quite complicated work, and I know that Angus and uh, and the people that have been working on the whole project, including myself. Um, you know, just don't want to get this wrong. 
but the results are really quite outstanding and extraordinary. An update on uh, Brockham this morning. I know the team at Angus Energy, they've, uh, they've said they're quietly optimistic over what's been learned here, but I know you're, you're a bit disappointed. Yes, I've been following Brockham for a, for a good few years now, and obviously this uh, sidetrack well. Um, I would have hoped it to, li- to deliver a, a lot more than this. Uh, you know, it was the tested large section, 195 metres, and recovered a little bit of oil. Um, but, you know, maybe a trend that has cropped up once before in, in the Kimmeridge section is that it's uh, produced, uh, produced water. Uh, which is not what you want at this uh, this early stage. So, uh, yeah, the share price is reflecting that uh, this was probably not what people had hoped for. They don't seem to have cracked the mechanism. And this isn't just Angus. This is a number of operators in this in this um, wheeled basin area. They're not quite cracking this uh, flow rate business, which is of concern. Well, what is the wider read across here as far as the wheeled and Horse Hill, for example? What are the knock-ons? Well, in some respects, Horse Hill provides the read across for others. Um, Horse Hills produced a lot more oil. Um, I'm still not particularly impressed with it. Uh, I was looking at some of the stats. I I have to do a lot of inferring from the UCOG announcements, which um, I wonder how how easy that is if you're less technical. I'm not hugely technical, but I know enough to, to piece things together. And I'm interpreting, you know, the numbers they're saying they've recovered 21,000 barrels, but that looks like it's over a three-month period. So, you know, what's that, 230 barrels a day if you're producing every day, um, which was not what the the big story with uh, with the Kimmeridge was all about. Uh, the Balcom well um, last year, that, that again had a high water cut. Um, they'll have to come back to that again. And Brockham again, we're seeing um, water in the uh, in the well bores and then and coming out the reservoir. So... You know, we're ticking them off here, Andrew. We're running out of where wells to test, and none of these results are setting the world on fire. We had we had bad luck with Brockham. We all know about it. It's oil exploration. Sometimes you hit a duster, and we hit a duster there. 